All right, Chef Yoda 4x4, YodaTech.com. It's a PV Grill Master on Pirate and some other sites that I plan to update as soon as possible, but I, I've just been sticking with Yoda Tech for a while. Um, this is the AZ OB2 compressor. just finally came, so I thought I'd open it up. Um, I'm kind of battling between locations, mounting locations. If I do it inside, it would likely be here, um, Toyo. Uh, a member on Toyotech, a member on Yotatech also, had suggested possibly on a L platform or something off the higher side of the roll bar, not too high, but able to get it to where the head is somewhere up in here. Um, and then with the window cracked, allow the heat to escape that way, you know. Uh, it would be out of the way, so it's a thought. Um, the way the mounting feet that it has provided or integrated into it are, it's not going to be really able to use that alone. I would have to find a way to, you know, maybe weld a plate to it or something like that and then just bolt the compressor on the sideways optional mounting uh, directly to that. So, all right. So, okay. I already took the um, pressure switch out, but I was going to show you how they had it packaged. The pressure switch was actually in with the digital gauge. So, you have your compressor over here. Then you have this box, which is the gauge. Oops, sorry about that. Oh, I tore the box. Throw it away. It's got to go back now. Just kidding. Okay, so... You know, the box for the gauge inside a box, it's not bad, good idea. Um, sure it's, you know, uh, they, they mention on their site a little bit that it's uh, up to the heat and so forth. So this is Arizona 220 PSI black digital pressure gauge, includes one, one piece sensor. So there's the part number, AZ220K, uh, two and one sixteenths inch or 62 millimeter diameter. Okay. All right, so that's that. That's the gauge. The gauge is right here. And as it says, 2 and 16 um, You can find plenty of videos, and I will post one once I get it running. That show that it's fairly small. It's actually, I should have looked that up again, but it didn't look as small in some of the cars. But it's actually fairly small. Um, this is the 220 PSI pressure gauge, which is, the part number is AZ200 PS4. So, I'm not sure if you can see that. Eh, whatever. AZ200 PS4. That's the number. So, okay, so there's that. The compressor's in here, obviously. Um, and I also got the filter relocation kit. Get this paper out of here. Uh, I'm not sure if they sent me any stickers. I mentioned that in the note, but I didn't hear back from them. And before I knew it, this thing was here. So, <laughs> 36 hours, not bad. To your door. Okay, this is a basic, basically the catalog. Okay, so it shows all their options. Uh, I looked and looked on their site. I wish I had seen this. <laughs> um, so, all right. Anyway, that's something I, I did have a little trouble navigating their site at first, but, you know, uh, that's my own fault for not looking deeper into that. So, anyway, this is a filter re relocation kit because their filter does come off of the compressor. Um, it looks like this, the filter on the end. It used to be steel, and now it is a type of composite plastic that's hard, um, that won't get, you know, damaged to where it's, you know, it gives you trouble getting it off, etc. And there's a space here for you to get a wrench in there and remove the filter, and you actually remote mount it using these zips and some DOT hose, which they... From the looks of it on their site, it's pretty darn expensive. 
But so for 20 bucks, the kit wasn't bad. I figured it, it might be a good idea, especially since I might have to mount it underneath. All right. And uh, so that's it so far. i um, gone over all of my, um, I'll pull this out. I've gone over all of my location stuff and such um, on my thread on Yoda Tech. And obviously, sorry, you know, there's lots of choices when it comes to mounting this, where you mount it and so forth, but, you know, uh, this comes with relays and everything else, so. video, I apologize, but, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, <clears throat> this is their new version, which is a half-inch steel braided air hose um, that goes directly to the tank. This is a built-in uh, pressure switch. It actually has not lots, uh, but a good chunk of wiring here that I would add to. It has a built-on relay. Um, so, ready to go. And leaves you the two other wires open, which are for you know, power and switch. And <clears throat> let's take this out of here. There it is, and it is actually pretty heavy, <laughs> and it's not too small, I have pretty big hands, but uh, it is pretty large, so we will take it into the truck. This is one spot I had in mind because while it is out and in my cargo area, it is completely free of everything. I could actually pull it back a little bit more, right about there. Um, and or turn these mounting feet up and mount it directly onto that door. Um, and that way when I need to get into the access door, I just turn the key, unlock it, open the door, and the compressor goes down and kind of acts as like a stop, you know, for the door, but I wouldn't get to open it all the way. But uh, you can see with the width of the feet, the way it's set up, uh, they really take your options away um, in some ways. But if you turn this, then you're going to get the feet closer to the body and it'll give you a lot more room as far as squeezing it into some space. Uh, but as you can see here, this would go directly all the way down to the bag. Uh, I'd have to wedge it in there. I don't believe it would fit without... Yeah, definitely. So, alright. Um, anyway, this is also, uh, as I was mentioning, the built-on pressure release. Um, that automatic shutoff type of thing. There's a built-in pressure safety valve. Uh, it's pretty good looking. <laughs> I don't really care about that, but you know, I just want it to be effective. But uh, it is definitely uh, attractive. So, on the ends here, these holes basically are just mounting, threaded mounting holes. And you just loosen this one, which I would guess is an Allen, right? Uh, I'll just have to look at the video in a minute. Um, and then, so you unbolt this one on the other side and just 
rotate this to wherever you want it, you can do it in three different locations or, or ways. You could actually, you know, mount it, uh, I guess, diagonally. Really? Or upside down or whatever. Um, same with the front. Um, you unbolt the front, the feet, and it's basically just attached uh, a bracket. So it already has the isolators on the feet and everything else. Um, this is a new design, whatever you can see in their video, that's an actually completely water, uh, DOT approved waterproof um, exhaust fan. So that's one of the reasons I wasn't so concerned about having it underneath is that. And then the relocation kit for the filter. Uh, the filter, as you can see, was not mounted on there. So I will show you that as well. And this is the line. I'll just bring these up here. All right, so this is the filter uh, that's going to go on there um, with a jam nut built into it, you see? All right, that's going to go right here, obviously. And with the relocation kit, it's actually going to go have one go on, right? Then the hose onto that end, and then the other end uh, with the filter screwed into it would be my guess. So those come apart, you know, for you to install this kit. Um, the hose, obviously, uh, is going to go like this, and I will not go too crazy getting this on at the moment, but it's basically, there we go. It is a flared type nut, uh, the one that's installed in there, so it will get tighter as I go. All right, so I just need a little th uh, good quality high temp plumber's tape, and this will give me a decent amount of room. I'd say it's about 20 inches, somewhere around there, um, allowing me to move this to the tank, which is right here. Okay, so it's a five gallon tank. I'm sure most people that are looking into this have seen plenty. Um, basically you know they're all basically to serve a purpose of charging up before you get to the end of the trail or for whatever purpose you use them for um, you know air horns or whatever air suspension especially I know that they have to run tanks to um, on the low riders and stuff to get them ready and to keep them charged so that they can handle a continuous charge when they're hopping all over and, you know, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Alright, so, this bubbled in here, but nothing special. And very light. I mean, this thing is so light. And they give you the uh, those other portions on the end, so I'll lay this here for a sec. See where it's taped. There we go. All right. Okay, so basically, I'm going to probably have mine where the relief valve is going to be down. Like that this will be um, on the side and then on the ends you have two half inch ports on each side and three eighth ports as well actually I believe these are quarter so you know for adding a blowgun or something like that it's plenty um, keep it compressed the welds all look good um, close look at that. And, uh, yeah. it looks ready to go. So, like I said, I would have it mounted up under the truck like this with the relief valve on the bottom, obviously, to get all the excess moisture and such out. Then have this uh, to the side. 
that I can have directly to the back or whatever. It's, it's, uh, this one I believe is 3 8 That one. Alright, so no hamburger threads, everything looks good, ready to go. And so that is the Air Zenith. 121011-00169. Alright, so that's it. That's the tank and the kit incomplete. And I'm going to contact them immediately and see uh, what they think about upgrading my kit to the four-wheel drive kit, which I had no idea even exists. Um, I never saw it on eBay anywhere. Um, so if you're going to look for it, look for it under 4 by 4 Um I'm not ticked, you know, I should have done a little more research. But you'd think it'd be on their front page. I know they're primarily in low riders, but they're moving into four-wheel drive world and you know. This would be the kit. Okay, so it comes with a gun and air gun with gauge. Um and a couple extra pieces, that's about it. Don't see really much more, uh, except for the hose, obviously. So, comes with an air hose and the air pressure air pressure gun. So, I'll look that up and see if it's, you know, worth it. Uh, I already have my ARB deflator ready to go for my next trip. So, hopefully, I can get this hooked up and uh, decide what to do. These are wow. <laughs> These kits, man, they get so pricey for the lowrider stuff. Really gnarly. Expensive. So, all right, guys, that's it so far. Um, this is, oh, yeah, okay, so this will be one of my ports where I can um, go into the tank and then add my line on the other side. So, add my air hose. I'll probably just end up going down to uh, Lowe's or something for now, get a high temp, you know, quality hose. I would willing to be be willing to bet that this is not really worth it to get. Uh, I, I'm not really a huge fan of these. I wanted to ask you guys really quick uh, what you thought about if I can use this, which is my line at home, obviously. So the cord is all stuck in here. Trying. Okay, so this is 3 8 hose, but it's really heavy duty. I already got my connects on there. Um, I could put different connects, you know, adapters to, to make it the proper, but you know, this thing with my Campbell and Hosfeld runs my stuff really quickly. Runs my 350 pound um, half inch drive air wrench, and that smaller one obviously with a breeze, no problem. So, um, anyway, it's uh, this has been a great buy, and it's um, drains quick and all that stuff. So I just wondered what you thought about this hose, or should I go get some half inch hose? I really prefer these types of hose to the coil ones. Um, I see a lot of guys complaining about those, so I wondered what you thought. Um, let me know. Uh, I believe I, <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's probably not up to the temperatures from what I've read, but I believe somewhere in this disastrous mess, I actually have a hose. Now this is going to be probably one of those, let's see, what did this come with? I believe it came with that pancake compressor. So it's not likely up to the job. Um, this is, like I said, my other Campbell Hosfeld that is uh, almost 20 years old, still works. Um, it's, you know, obviously being older, it doesn't have the power, but the Power Pal was a great, great compressor. Um, it just didn't cut it for guys like this, really. It'd take a little bit longer to charge up. So this thing, it's it's a beast for you know for what I need it for. It's plenty. I can blow out the whole shop and all that stuff quickly. All right. So I just like I said, I'm wondering what you guys thought. I've got this hose. Um, they're convenient in that you can you know coil them up and go back to your business.
but uh, I believe these are quarter lines. Yeah, should be a quarter inch line right here. Yep, okay, so, you know, obviously this is ideal rather than this, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we want to keep it steady. I just, that way probably the tank would stay charged more before having to, but it's all about time, you know. This is the whole reason I wanted a decent compressor was to cut down the times, so um, this is... Unlike I had said in another video, this is 25 inches long, not 29 or 28, but it's, as it's shorter, it's taller. Um, I don't necessarily, I'm not sure positive yet, need the mounting feet, so we'll see on that as well. It's not something I'm worried about warranty and all that as much. It's not going anywhere, but uh, it's a nice tank and it won't rust and, you know, I think it fits the bill for me. It works for me. All right, guys, I will update as soon as I can with more information.